right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a whole bunch of good news stuff for you. But before we jump into the very first article of the day, I just want to say that I have a podcast planned for Friday uh, this week. And it's going to be something a little bit different. It's going to be live, and we're going to be talking about crypto and all that sort of thing. So normally I do go live uh, usually every other day, but I'm usually playing a game, and, and most people just aren't interested in that. And, you know, I chat with crypto and in the community and stuff. But this is going to be quite a bit different. This is going to be a podcast with a couple of guests, and we're all going to be live and uh, just talking about crypto and all kinds of different subjects. I'm going to have a couple special guests on Friday. It's sort of tentatively planned at the moment, uh, but on Thursday, you should see a live notification for the next day for Friday on my channel if that's going to happen. Still working out a couple kinks, but uh, for now, you can join the Discord that I usually hang out in. Um, and that is in the description below. So if you use Discord, go ahead and join our server. And that's the server that I'm usually hanging out in or I'm, you know, playing a game and talking to friends in or something like that. There's a few different channels to talk about crypto and that sort of thing. But um, so I'm pretty excited about that. So if you guys want to check that out, it's going to be Friday and there will be a little scheduled uh thing on my youtube channel you'll see that it's live and then it's going to say that it's it's going to be live friday but uh, you'll see anyway let's just hop right into it u.s presidential candidate tulsi gabbard bought crypto at the height of the bull market Ooh, oh uh, that hurts but somebody had to buy at the height of the bull market a lot of people did and i think that's something that we all forget and uh, so that means that there's a lot of locked up volume and liquidity of people that may have not sold yet at all there may have people that bought a thousand, ten thousand dollars, or even more in Bitcoin when it was sixteen, seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars, and they just refuse to sell. So I think if Bitcoin ever gets back to in the high teens again or close to the all-time high, there's going to be a lot of uh, volatility. Uh, you haven't seen anything yet. So I think once we get up there, we're going to see a lot of dramatic changes because you're going to have a lot of people selling off because they're just they're just glad that it finally got up to the price where they can actually sell it and either uh, take a small loss or just. Uh, get back what they put in <clears throat> and then you're gonna have a lot of people buying in at the same time because of the FOMO of the price going up so it's gonna be a pretty wild time when that does actually occur which I think it's gonna be sooner than later if you know not a matter of uh, if but a matter of when so uh, US congressman Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii is running for president in of the United States in 2020 uh, Gabbard bought Litecoin and Ether in December 2017 at the height of the crypto bull market, according to federal filings. And she says, I've decided to run and make a formal announcement within the next week. And there are a lot of challenges that are facing the American people and that I want to help to solve. Of course, uh, of course, every president candidate would say something like that. But um so Gabbard 37 is a fresh, energetic face on the American political scene. However, her chances of winning the Democratic Party's nomination are pretty slim, given the huge field of candidates. But, for example, Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts, also running for president, Warren's a crypto critic who says the virtual currency market is full of scam artists. Well, I guess that's not entirely untrue. Um... So Tulsi Gabbard bought $1,001 to $15,000 of Ether and Litecoin in December 2017. So that's a pretty big margin of, uh, of difference, but that's probably just how you file your taxes. If it's anywhere in between those brackets, um, you have to pay such and such tax, etc. The Bitcoin price soared to a record of 19500 I think it was a little bit more than that in certain places, but eh, fair enough. It's unclear how much crypto Gabbard currently holds. However, it's likely that she lost some money on her investments amid the ongoing bear market. Uh, yeah, if she didn't sell. Uh, yeah, technically you did. But as long as you, you didn't sell, you didn't lose any money. But even if you didn't sell, yeah, your investment is worth a lot less. But uh, either way, so you can see Ethereum, Litecoin, um, you know, just sort of like a rental unit or something like that. It's just a modest $500,001 to a $1 million in rent. Not a big deal with an income of 15001 to 50,000. Oh, it's a rental unit that she's actually uh, renting out. So it's it's only, you know, she only made 15,000 to 50,000 dollars on a rental unit that's 500,000. Oh, good old senators renting things out. But um, other U.S. lawmakers who invested in crypto include Republican Bob Goodlett, 
Um, I got nothing. A, term, a 13 term congressman from Virginia and uh, Goodlett uh, revealed that he held 17,000 to 80,000 worth of Bitcoin. Again, what's with these tax brackets? 17,000 to 80,000? It could be anything in between. It could be $17,000 even or a total of 80,000. One of the two, right? There's not much of a difference. You know what I'm saying? Worth of Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, and Ether. And uh, Goodlett's son, Bobby Goodlett, is an angel investor in Coinbase, which is the largest US based crypto exchange. But there's a lot of lobbyists pushing for crypto in Washington. Coinbase Circle Digital Currency Group recently launched a lobbying group. And I talked about that a little while ago, that I think that Coinbase is sort of lobbying Congress so that they can be the best, so that so that Congress can uh, pass, uh, so that they don't actually have to go through the SEC so much, and so that they can add more things on there. And they're also, when you're when you're lobbying, you kinda, you, you're kind of you kind of making some friends, you know what I mean? You're making a little bit of friends, and they're using USD, uh, USDC, and not USDT, uh, because because there's so many stable coins out there now. Um, so I think, um, you know, Coinbase is really trying to lobby for that SEC to not break down on them so much. And they're getting around that by whenever you whenever you see Coinbase adding new currencies now, it's always in USDC and not US dollar at all. So uh, that's that's a little shady there. But uh, some say that skeptics, uh, you know, that Bitcoin is dying. But um, other than that, we, you know, hopefully... Th- the U.S. passes some kind of some some kind of bills or something like that, that that states one way or another with the SEC, because right now we can't have a lot of institutional investors into crypto uh, if it's not for sure for certain with the SEC, because they have to go like this, and the government's now getting in on, and then crypto is sooner or later just going to be all of the government, and uh, we sort of lost everything that we have even fought for in the beginning. But uh, either way, uh, even senators are losing a lot of money in the crypto bear market, so you're not the only one. Uh, moving on. Lightning Network without invoices brings us closer to streaming money. The latest upgrade, Sphinx, which developers describe as being a work in progress, is nonetheless available to anyone already. Uh, the coolest part about this new feature is that it can be used today in the wild as long as uh, both nodes are updated to this branch. Um, so the new feature is it allows you to send funds instantly without needing to create an invoice. So before with Lightning Network, you had to create an invoice and it was this big pain and then you could send it. But uh, now, it's kind of like how Bitcoin network is now that you can just send crypto to somebody. But again, Lightning Network is very, very slow right now, uh, at least in terms of adoption. And it's also technically hard for people to run because not only do you have to run a Bitcoin node, you have to run simultaneously a Lightning Network node as well. And they are not particularly user friendly. So the Lightning Network is a protocol currently active for Bitcoin and Litecoin, which allows users to send tokens instantly with a fee averaging less than one US cent. The technology debuted, debuted on the Bitcoin network a year ago and has grown rapidly but remains in an experimental state as developers iron out stability and reliability issues at present sending or receiving a transaction still requires some technical understanding some eh, some eh, probably let's just say a lot uh, which has led to lightning an unattractive option for entry level users despite its time and cost benefits and i think that's one thing uh, another whole talking point of crypto in general that um Developers, it, it, they seem to not be focusing on the the, the user friendly, uh, the usability of crypto. Uh, I think what developers should start doing is the grandmother test. If you developed a coin and you're like, yes, this is this is awesome, and if you could take it to your grandmother's house and be like, hey, this is how you use the coin, and this is this is what it does, and this is how you use it, etc. And if your grandmother can understand it, uh, then you're good to go. But if it confuses her in the least. It's not ready yet. Uh, and I think that's something that, like, that's kind of a joke. It's somewhat facetious, but at the same time, it's a realistic thing. Uh, if, if people don't get how to use crypto, then it's very difficult for them. And just imagine uh, people that don't know anything about crypto have never used it. They have to research it. They have to get a wallet. They have to go into an exchange. They have to put money on an exchange. They have to buy it on the exchange. They have to send it to the wallet successfully without just messing that up and sending it somewhere totally different. And then they have to send that coin to the person that they want to buy it from, wait for for that and then get their and then get their product so it, it, right now it's not a very user-friendly process and i think that's what really is going to drive the future uh, in the same way that windows <clears throat> uh, you know drove the future of of the home computer there was a, you know first ms dos was mostly for uh you know the the computer geeks uh the computer nerds if you will 
knowing how to what what to press in what directories and how to use this that or the other thing because it just was very very difficult overall um especially for most people and then windows 95 comes along oh now we got this desktop i can make these folders i could put all these files here i could do all this uh, it's very very easy and as, as windows comes about it's it's more easy as it goes on um and that that changed the whole pc game for everybody uh, especially what especially once ms dos came around before that it was even more difficult and just nobody needed a computer and even people were saying you know what i don't think anybody needs the internet you like well before that there i don't think any what there's no reason that uh, you know people quoted as Saying there's no reason anybody wants a computer in their home or needs the internet. That's crazy. You know, it's all too hard and, and you need to be a scientist. But now Windows comes out, makes it totally different. So that's what crypto needs to do, in my opinion. Uh, moving on. The quantum threat. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, quantum computers think a bit differently than PCs and smartphones. And uh, we now have much better at solving complex mathematical problems. Um, yeah, indeed they do. PCs are deterministic and, and quantum computers are non-deterministic and you get all of the outcomes for a particular uh, input. Whereas PCs, you're only gonna get the, the, the exact output that uh, that the computer is going to give you. Uh, it's totally different. Um, quantum computers are really amazing. I, I highly suggest you guys watch a documentary on them. They're very interesting, but very, very primitive as of yet. And you kind of need to have liquid nitrogen around to cool them, uh, which I, uh, do we got any liquid nitrogen? I don't have any, so I can't run one. Uh, but, uh, you know, just as soon as you get your liquid nitrogen and your, and your quantum computer that's the size of a room, it's going to be easy. Come on. You can just hook up windows to it or I don't know. The release of this new computer instantly piqued uh, the interest of some members in crypto who asked, uh, does this quantum computer threaten Bitcoin? And the answer, as usual, can be found in the video archives of the great Andreas Antonopoulos, who said and explains, uh, the threat of quantum computing is only real if it's available to one actor and not to others. Even still, if a person did manage to develop their own supercomputer, Bitcoin would probably be too small a target to waste it on. Hmm, maybe, or maybe not. Uh, meanwhile, if quantum computers are readily available to everyone, then the entire Bitcoin network will upgrade together, and there is no threat. And when I tweeted this answer out yesterday, I was delighted to receive further clarification from legendary cypherpunk and cryptographer Adam Back, who I had the pleasure of meeting at a Bitcoin birthday party. In these three tweets, uh, Adam explains that the Q System 1 is super weak, even compared to a 1972-era computer. Furthermore, uh, there are quantum-resistant solutions currently in Bitcoin's development roadmap, although we may be decades away from it uh, even being relevant. Uh, so Bitcoin uh, can calmly and slowly watch QC. So... Uh, there are a lot of quantum computers out now. Uh, I think one is, is the D-Wave, and I think one of them is the Google. I can't remember what, exactly what they call it, but there's two different uh, types of quantum computers, and uh, the D-Wave is one of them, and the uh, Google is the other one. The D-Wave is the weaker one, the Google is the better one, and either way, the, these computers aren't doing much as of yet. Uh, quantum computers are kind of different so you would never really need a quantum computer even in the age of quantum computing at least currently and i, I could foresee at least in the next 50 years probably not uh you know if you just want to get on your computer and play a game watch a video email i don't know watch your cat videos or whatever uh a regular computer is just fine for that and, and there's no way shape or form that you need a quantum computer for quantum computers are better for uh data analysis and and uh facial recognition and database um, searching. So because a quantum computer can search the whole database at once, whereas a regular computer has to search every individual one. Now it's very, very fast and you won't notice it's searching every individual one, but the quantum computer can do it all at once. And right now our quantum computers are uh, processing like five times three and stuff. And we get the we get the output of 15 and we're like, wow, that's awesome. Holy crap. Uh, but uh, right now, not even close to being able to like crack Bitcoin, because if you had a supercomputer powerful enough, you could essentially solve all of the blocks of Bitcoin immediately. Um, and it wouldn't be 2047 uh, until it's solved. It would be fairly immediate. However, uh, I don't think we're anywhere even remotely close to that. But uh, however, uh, I do think that um, Bitcoin might not be a small target to waste it on. But the problem is with that at the same time is that I think the only people that are going to have a quantum computer first is probably like the American NSA. Uh, they're always way ahead. I read an article one time uh, that in the 60s, I think it was in the mid or late 60s, they had a uh, 
600 megahertz processor supercomputers like they, they all had 600 megahertz processors and operated at 600 megahertz if you will and the the american people the the the, the world didn't get 600 megahertz processors till i think the late generation pentium 2s maybe pentium 3 um and that wasn't for about 30 years later. So if you think about it, the NSA and their their overall funding and science and level of science and how much that the, what they can do is essentially 30 years ahead of us. So in 30 years, the processor that's going to be in your computer is probably the processor that the NSA is using now um, or some sort of derivative of that. And it's very interesting uh, to think about that. So does the NSA have quantum computers? Surely they're working on them. I'm almost positive. I'm sure if anybody comes out with any kind of progress, they're the first to know it, and they're the first to uh, act on that. So, but would the NSA really be interested in like destroying Bitcoin and solving all the blocks? I kind of doubt it. That'd probably be small potatoes at that point. They'd probably be more interested in stealing like the data of the entire world all at the same time because uh, they're like super villains. But um, overall, I don't think quantum computers are ever going to be too much of a problem. And again, like I said, it's in the roadmap and in the roadmap of a lot of cryptos. Uh, there's a lot of cryptos out there that are supposedly quantum resistant and such. So I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem considering you're not going to get one of these in your house. Uh, at least 50 years because uh, right now they need to be super cooled so not gonna be a problem the st louis federal reserve report increased supply of altcoins will decrease bitcoin's value you think uh the creation of competing altcoins is likely to place downward pressure on the prices of all cryptocurrencies including bitcoin the conclusion was found by research conducted by the federal reserve bank of st louis and the report cites two perspective bitcoin bulls believe that the cap supply and increased demand will increase bitcoin's price and the bears believe that its price will fall to zero uh so we think the future price path is more likely to remain bounded between these two extremes so if bitcoin was a hundred thousand dollars it should be fifty thousand because the extreme is zero i don't get what that's supposed to mean but what i do get from this is is the point that uh the, as more altcoins come out bitcoin is going to essentially go down and share a little bit less of that cap but not right now 52.4 percent that's showing quite the opposite however bitcoin dominance before uh was in the 80s so i think we can actually take a look at this and and go back so bitcoin dominance right now what that means is the share of the total market cap um and <clears throat> You can see that um, in like July 2014, we had Bitcoin at 93%. Um, and even at the beginning of 2017, Bitcoin was at 84, 86 and such and such percent where it, um, it, it did fluctuate a little bit from time to time. But you can see that it did dunk uh, pretty good. And even at the, at the end of the bull run there, it was very low and the old coins were much higher. 32% was about the lowest point there. Um, so yes, it has been getting chunked away by altcoins, and we can see that in coin market cap. I mean, you can just scroll and scroll and scroll and see these. So 31 million that could have gone to Bitcoin, 32 million that could have gone to Bitcoin, uh, 33 million that could have gone to Bitcoin. Uh, but I don't necessarily dislike altcoins uh, because I feel like uh, disliking altcoins would be like disliking technological progress. And if it was just Bitcoin, great but um you know sooner or later one of these altcoins is going to come out that's going to just destroy all we ever knew maybe and that, that it was just like wow why didn't anybody think of this this is amazing this blows bitcoin and everything else out of the water and its price goes up and the whole world starts using it who knows um you know it just in the same way with software and games if fortnite never came out would you know it would be the, some other game would be more popular but then fortnite comes along and all the nine-year-olds in the world are using it so you know, I think bashing altcoins is bashing, you know, technological progress. But a lot of these altcoins, uh, what we do have to admit, though, is a lot of these altcoins are borderline useless. And a lot of them haven't had any developers, you know, uh, working on them or, you know, improving them in any way, shape or form for over a year or very long time. And uh, all this... Um, all this money, 12 million, we're, we're at the 200th coin, it's still 11 million to be on the 200th spot. And so all these millions essentially is just sort of sitting around. And um, a lot of them, we can all admit, aren't really going to go anywhere. 
But um, so they, they do have a point there, but I, I think it's one of those kind of duh points where, you know, you're like, hey, two plus two is four, or this tree is made out of wood. And you're like, wow, that's a really great perspective there. So, yeah, it makes sense that all coins, uh, you know, coming out are going to soak up some of the some some of Bitcoin's profit. So you might use Bitcoin to buy into this altcoin and, you know, and then they might sell that that Bitcoin right back and spread out the wealth a little bit. Uh, but as we can see here, we got kind of a dump going on right after that, after those two whale purchases. We had uh, Bitcoin from 3,600 to 38, then to 4,000, then from 4,000 to 3,800, then to 3,600. So you can see every time you see a wall of Bitcoin, um, you know, being purchased like that, that it's it's kind of a good time to sell. It's hard to say uh, because if there was a bull market, then then this would just continue going up. But in a stagnant market like this, you could see these uh, being purchased. Um, and this you can't quite see the other one, but there was another 200 right here. And it went up 200, and then we can see that it went down 200, went down 200. So usually when these happen, when these walls like this that increase at two, three hundred dollars, it's like one purchase usually, uh, one whale purchase or whale movement, if you will. And then it, usually a couple days later, it dumps by the same amount. So if you just wait and you sell right here, um, just wait like, just be patient and wait like three days, and it's going to dump by the same amount. Um, you know, in, in a few days. That's usually the MO of Bitcoin, or at least it has been basically all of 2018. Uh, 2019 might be a totally different year, but uh, who knows with that. Uh, but that's all I have for you guys today in the news. Um, but uh, make sure you guys join that Discord. There is a group... Um, there is a little chat room in the Discord um, of my podcast, and in there you can make suggestions of what I could talk about or what I could ask or this, that, or the other thing. Like I said, that's going to be Friday, and it's going to be about 2 p.m. Arizona time. So if you don't know what that is, you just got to Google it. 2 p.m. Arizona time. It'll give you your time in Google, and uh, make sure you guys are there. Um, like I said, I got a couple guests, and we're going to talk about. Um, so I got another YouTuber, and I got a good friend of mine who's going to be on there, and we're going to be talking about crypto. We're going to be talking about our channels and all kinds of stuff and mining. So it's going to be kind of cool. So it's like my live streams that I usually do, but when I usually do a live stream, I'm playing a game and I'm kind of chatting with people and a little distracted. But this time, it's just going to be me and a couple other people and. Uh, uh, it's going to be a crypto podcast, and uh, we're going to see how it goes. So that's going to be sort of the flagship, uh, you know, first try uh, on Friday, and uh, we'll see what kind of reaction it gets, and if you guys like it, and uh, we'll um, we'll just check it out. So that's going to be in the description below. Also in the description below, my Twitch, my Twitter and my uh, Steam account. Make sure you follow that as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed this, and as usual, I will see you guys next time.